So today we're going to learn how to factor using another type of method called the grouping method. Uh, but before we jump into the grouping method, let's review how to find a GCF, uh, greatest common factor. So I want you to write down this first example, x squared y plus 2y, and I want you to factor. So if I'm asking you what the greatest common factor is, I notice that there's a y in both of these terms. So if I factor out a y, I have y times x squared plus 2. All done factoring there. So I'm going to give us a different problem. And now I'm going to give you x squared times x plus 1 plus 2 times x plus 1. If we are looking at this example, with that first example, notice how we have the x squared times y, x squared times something, and then 2 times y, 2 times something. Notice how this y is being replaced with an x plus 1. So if we are looking at the greatest common factor of this particular problem, we have x squared times x plus 1. Notice how the x plus 1 is in this term and that the x plus 1 is in this term. So if we box this off and notice how if we looked at these two terms, x plus 1 is the GCF. In the same way, the y was the GCF in the original problem. So if you factor out the GCF, we're going to factor out an x plus 1. And now when I take out an x plus 1 from this term, we're left with just x squared. And when I take out an x plus 1 from the second term, we're left with a plus 2. So GCF, or the finding the greatest common factor, it doesn't always have to be a monomial, like this first problem. right? We factored out the y, but it can also be a binomial, and we can factor out a binomial. So let's practice a few of these exercises. Now let's look at this one. So we had before the same binomial that we factored out of each of these terms. So if I kind of broke this off, and you don't have to do this for every problem, but it's helpful to start, we have a squared times x plus 4, and then 3 times x minus 4. Now are x plus 4 and x minus 4 the same binomial? No. So there is no GCF. So we're going to call this a prime polynomial a polynomial that we cannot factor. So, let's say that this was Let's say the example has changed to a squared times x plus 4 minus 3 times x plus 4. Okay, so I'm changing this example. Now do we have a GCF in this first term? Do we have a GCF in the second term? Notice that we have an x plus 4 and an x plus 4. So if we factor that out, we can factor out an x plus 4. And in the first term, we're left with an a squared. And in the second term, notice how we've got minus. We're left with minus 3. So sometimes we're, we're going to be able to factor out this binomial. But going back, notice how these were different binomials, so we could not factor that out. So let's talk about the grouping method. That's just a skill that we need to know for the grouping method. But I'm giving us this example. Let's all write it down. We have 6x cubed minus 9x squared plus 4x minus 6. 
So in the previous examples that we've looked at, we've looked at examples that have had two terms or a binomial, three terms, a trinomial, and then we had four terms that we've looked at, but we we're only able to factor out a GCF. So in this particular example, is there a greatest common factor? The answer is no. So there's no GCF, and we wouldn't call this prime because now we're going to talk about this method called the grouping method. There are four terms in this particular problem. And when you use the grouping method, you're always looking for an expression that is four terms. So this may seem a little strange because you're probably like, okay, I don't know if I would be able to come up with this on our own. So let's watch, it, watch this example and let's see what we can come up with so then we can practice more of the grouping method. So the grouping method, we are grouping. And if we have four terms, we're gonna wanna group two and two. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to make two groups, and I'm going to ask myself, all right, in this first group, what is my GCF? So 6x cubed minus 9x squared, and my GCF is 3x squared. So if I factor out a 3x squared, I'm left with 2x minus 3. So the same question goes for the second group. 4x minus 6. What is the GCF? The GCF is 2. So this plus, bring this down with it. So if I factor out a GCF of 2, we're left with 2x minus 3 in that second group. Now this part of the problem looks very similar to the previous example that we've looked at when we're factoring out a greatest common factor. So we've said, okay, what's the GCF, GCF of the first group? What's the GCF of the second group? Now we have to ask ourselves, what's the GCF of this entire statement here? And notice how we have 2x minus 3 and 2x minus 3. So we can factor out the 2x minus 3 from this expression. And when we factor that out from this first term, we're left with 3x squared. And when we factor that out from the second expression, we're left with plus 2. So that's how we factor using the grouping method. You're saying you're grouping, and then you're saying, all right, what's the GCF of the first, GCF of the second group, and then what's the GCF of the whole thing, and then continuing to factor. So let's write down this one, and let's try this together. So we have four terms again. We're going to practice with the grouping method. And let's make two groups. Here's my first group. Here's my second group. And then we're asking ourselves, what's the GCF of the first group? x squared. And then we're left with x plus 1. And now when we ask ourselves, what's the GCF of the second group? There is no GCF. But there is a 1 in front of this binomial. So I always like writing this 1 in front. Just so we don't forget that there is a 1 there. So now, is there a GCF from this first group? We have an x plus 1 here and an x plus 1 there. So if we factor that GCF out, what's left in this first term? What's left in the second term? And we have factored by grouping. Let's try this next one. Okay, so why don't you all write this down on your own, pause the video, and try it on your own. And then when you're finished working through the exercise, I'll go through it. So pause complete the problem, and then hit play again. Okay, so again, we have four terms. We have this first group, and we have the second group. And in the first group, 3x, oops, not 3x, just x squared is our GCF, and we're left with 4x plus 
3. And then we have plus 1 times 2x plus 1. So is there a GCF in this step? There's a 4x plus 3 here. That's not over there as well. It's a 2x plus 1. So we call this prime. So some of these examples we may not be able to go further. So just keep in mind, it's okay if we cannot factor something and we would have to call it prime. All right, let's try this next one. So we have x cubed plus 2x squared plus 12x plus 3. So if we have a GCF in the first group, write this down. And I want you to go through this one fully and see how you do. So if you haven't paused the video, pause it so you can continue. But I'm going to go through and go through it together. So in the first group, 2x squared is the GCF. And I'm left with 4x plus 1. And then a 3 is left is the GCF, so I'm going to say 4x plus 1. So in all, our GCF is 4x plus 1, and we're left with 2x squared plus 3. And that is the end of this video.